come on, those are rookie excursion numbers. We could do much better than this. Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. If you saw my last video where I disassembled my Klipsch R10SW, then you heard me talking about how wimpy the original driver is, and that I wanted to try and upgrade it. After looking at Parts Express and eBay, I decided to go with a used driver from a Martin Logan Dynamo 700W subwoofer. There are plenty of these drivers available on eBay because the amplifiers in this series of subwoofers are known to fail prematurely, so owners are opting to part their subwoofers out instead of repairing them. That means you can get a phenomenal deal on what I think is an excellent driver. I paid under $45 for this 10 inch driver and it is far superior to the original Klipsch driver in every way. The goal of this project is to get almost the same decibel output that an SVS SP3000 or RHEL HT1205 can produce during the Doom intro scene for only a fraction of the price. Obviously, I'm not expecting a simple driver upgrade to outperform any of these subwoofers, but what I am expecting is a tremendous upgrade with little out-of-pocket expense and a few hours of my time. I'll be using a decibel meter app on my phone to conduct the measurements. I know these decibel meter apps aren't exactly 100% accurate, but it should give me an idea if I gained anything with this upgrade. So let's get started. Before I tell you how I did this upgrade, let me go over the specs of the new driver. Pictured here is my new Martin Logan driver versus the original Klipsch driver. As you can see, the motor assembly on the Martin Logan driver is quite a bit bigger than the original. The Martin Logan driver has a double stack magnet assembly, a vented pull piece, more excursion, higher power handling, and a much stiffer cone. All of these improvements add up to creating a much better driver that should deliver greater output and better sound quality. Like I said earlier, the goal is to reach near the same decibel output that an SB3000 or HT1205 can produce during the Doom intro scene. In this video, I'll show you step by step on what I had to do in order to install my new Martin Logan driver into the cabinet of my Klipsch R10SW. Let me start off by saying that this wasn't a drop-in fit, and it will require some modification to the cabinet in order to perform this upgrade. If you are somewhat handy with tools, then you should be able to perform this upgrade with only an hour or two of your time. The tools and materials I used to perform this upgrade were a Dremel, sandpaper, screwdriver, painter's tape, and a razor blade. So let's get started. The first thing I did was remove the original driver. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver in order to do this. If you plan on using a power tool, be very careful so that the tool doesn't slip off the head of the screw and puncture the surround. That is if you care about keeping your original driver in good shape. So I got my new Martin Logan sub in the mail today. The only problem is, and I'm going to show you here, is obviously the motor structure is a lot bigger on this subwoofer so it's a lot deeper and it's wider it's got a vented pole piece on it as well but the problem is is when I go to put it inside the uh, the box to install it it hits on the port right here because the motor the magnet is so big it just hits it right there. So I'm going to have to trim that down. I've already measured everything out. I had a feeling I was pro that was probably going to be the case anyways. So I'm going to have to take a, a razor blade <clears throat> and go around this edge because this is just a cardboard port anyway. So, you know, with a nice sharp razor, you should be able to, you know, trim. Um, two inches off, that's what I measured. So I'm right now I'm starting off at two inches and that should give me enough clearance for this new subwoofer to fit inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. You want to take your time here so as not to damage the cardboard port. The key to trimming the port by 2 inches is having a very sharp razor blade.
Now that the port has been trimmed, let's see if the new driver will drop right in. The good news is, the driver fits now that the port has been trimmed by 2 inches. The bad news is, it has revealed two more problems. Oh, the original scary. driver was recessed a few centimeters on the front baffle and unfortunately, this recessed circular cutout isn't large enough to accommodate the new driver. The second problem is the opening. The hole where the driver drops in is also not large enough, so I will need to trim a few centimeters off there as well. All of this can be done with a Dremel and a sanding disc. Let me show you. First, I'm going to work on trimming the opening so the speaker basket can clear it. Here I'm using my Dremel with a sanding disc to enlarge the opening by a few centimeters. The key to creating a new enlarged circular cutout is to not spend too much time in one place. Let the Dremel tool do the work and let your hand go along for the ride. It only took me about 5 minutes to enlarge this hole so the speaker basket would clear it. Remember, you're only removing a centimeter or two from this opening, so don't go crazy with it. Next, I work on enlarging the recessed opening where the speaker flange mounts to the cabinet. Before I can enlarge this opening with my Dremel tool, I will need to protect the finish on the front baffle. I'll be using painter's tape to protect the finish. This step is a bit tedious and time consuming, but it's worth it so the finish doesn't get damaged. I tore off small pieces of tape and then placed them around the edge where the speaker mounts. You'll want to cover the entire edge with painter's tape to ensure everything is protected. This will protect the finish while I enlarge the opening with my Dremel tool. Now I'm ready to enlarge the recessed opening where the speaker flange mounts. Enlarging this opening is very simple, but some care must be taken in order to not damage the outside finish. During this process I hold the Dremel tool perpendicular to the flange and let the rotation of the sanding disc move the tool around the edge of the opening while making sure not to spend too much time in one area. If you let the tool do the work, then you'll be left with a nice circular opening. Basically the process I followed is to do a few passes around the outer edge of the opening with the Dremel and sanding disc. Then test fit the speaker. If it didn't fit, I would repeat the process until it did. It took me about 5-8 to eight minutes to complete this step. I will leave the complete unedited footage of what I did during this process so you can get an idea of what is needed. I know it may seem like an overwhelming task to complete, but it actually was rather easy to do. Almost there. Nice! Looks like the painter's tape protected the finish very well. I can't see any damage from when I was using the Dremel tool to enlarge this opening. That's great! Next, I reinstalled the polyfill inside the cabinet. I had originally removed the polyfill when I was using the Dremel tool because I didn't want all of the wood shavings to get embedded in the material. That would make a huge mess. I then used a few lines of glue on the sides of the cabinet to make sure the polyfill would stay in place. Before I used the Dremel tool on this opening, this flange where the speaker mounts was painted black. Since I don't feel comfortable taping this off and painting it, I decided to use a permanent marker to make it black again. And I think it turned out very well. 
Honestly, I can hardly tell that this was done with a marker instead of paint. Now that the modifications to the cabinet are complete, it's now time to install my new beefy driver and run some DB tests. Like a glove? Well, here's the finished product. I think it turned out great. If you're handy with tools and have a few hours to spare, then upgrading the driver in your Klipsch R10SW with this driver from Martin Logan is a definite worthwhile upgrade. I won't go into too much detail here as I'll be doing a review video later on, but all I can say is wow, this new driver is incredible and has really transformed the performance of this subwoofer. The bass used to be monotone and boomy. Now the bass is tight, controlled, and full of definition. Stay tuned in part two when I let the games begin. My Frankenstein sub versus my SVS SB3000 and RHT 1205 I'll be running some decibel meter tests using the intro from the movie Doom. Remember, the goal of this project is to have almost the same decibel output from an SB3000 or HT1205. Can't she do it?